Morgan and today I'm excited to read to you a stream of consciousness short story that I wrote and I am on the autism spectrum and this story is inspired by a game of phasmophobia. Confronting my demon in the padded room, the asylum, Sunny Meadows, is the hardest map in phasmophobia. It's a huge, dimly lit maze that's easy to get virtually lost in. Even with my brightness setting turned all the way up, it's shrouded in a sort of darkness that makes it difficult to see. Even more so when the game's power supply, the breaker, is off and the in-game light switches don't work. I'm getting stalked by the ghost. It keeps hunting, like a predator of old, and I'm left stumbling around in the dark in the recreation of a sanatorium basement. I open the first door I can reach, walk my virtual body into the room, and close the door behind me. Hopefully the ghost doesn't check this closet-sized room if, it, if its pitter-patter footsteps reverberate down the hall. I tilt my mouse, taking in the padded walls of the room. No fluorescent lights. Soothing. Cat's eye sort of darkness. The door opens and closes at my mercy. While many of the doors on the map lock and unlock at the ghost's whim, I can open this door with ease. I decide when I want to leave this room. I close the door to keep the demon out, not to keep the demon safe from me. I reclaim the power. The padded walls are reminiscent of too many memories from my own life, of carpeted walls and doors that lock from the outside, and two bright, flickering lights of hopelessness, of being misunderstood, demonized, like the demon wandering the asylum's halls. It's fitting that the game is called Phasmophobia, because of the fear that ghosts can elicit. But I think the pixel Phasmo, the ghost wandering the halls of this make-believe asylum, had a lot more to fear than any human player. The horrors of video games are scary, but not as terrifying as the treatments disabled people have faced in real-life asylums, and the practices that still continue to this day, even when the doors of many institutions have been closed. The little girls, locked in rooms with padded walls, exist in the 21st century, in schools that are supposed to teach, reminiscent of how asylums were supposed to treat. I was alone. I was isolated, and as my character stands in the recreation of a padded cell, I feel a connection with all the other invisible victims of solitary confinement. I am not the only victim. We are the victims. The fictional backstory I give to the in-game demon is that they're... They were a victim of ableism, too. They're a metaphorical stand-in for every other man, woman, child, for every human regardless of age and gender identity, who has been dehumanized, abused, and demonized by a society that does not treat the disabled as equal. The hunt is over. I exit the padded room. I leave it of my own volition. I continue to explore the asylum's basement in search of the ghost room, and with a profound respect for the grim attention to detail, I'm experiencing with shadowy insight what life would have been like if I had been born a mere century earlier. People like me were mercy killed by the Nazis, forcibly sterilized in the United States, and routinely institutionalized in the 20th century. It's painful and therapeutic to see the true history of what disabled people's lives were like depicted in a video game. I err towards the thought process of take pain and make art. And video games are interactive and have a strong immersiveness similar to a choose your own adventure or live theater. The demon hunts again and I duck into another room. This one has a chair, but the chair has straps on it like something out of a spy movie or a medieval torture chamber. And there's blood splattered around the room and I can make out surgical equipment on a sort of side tray or table. It looks like the sort of setup that would be required to perform some grisly surgery or amputation or maybe a truth extraction without anesthesia. More than anything else, though, it reminds me of the Simpsons episode. I think it was a treehouse of horror where Homer accidentally breaks history and Ned Flanders becomes the present day ruler. He restrained people in a similar way so that they had to listen to what he had to say and off screen characters were given lobotomies. It's disquieting how quiet people are about lobotomies. The damage of them was inflicted upon countless lives, and yet I only see them depicted in horror-themed media. The implication of something disturbing, forced surgery, is instead cathartic 
and I feel a sense of peace knowing that the victims of such barbarism are being recognized. The blood stains and emptiness of the room shows the truth, the reality that many disabled people were experimented on, given ineffective cures that only made their situations worse, and many went to their graves without their stories being told. They were erased from the history books, their presence eerily missing like the emptiness in this room. Our presence demands to be felt, like the demon hunting the hallway. A disabled soul shall not be erased, no matter how civilized society may wish us to be eradicated. The ghost's favorite room is empty, save for an oversized bathtub. It gives me freezing temperatures as an evidence. Do you ever stop to think about how baths can be a place of bliss and relaxation, yet the most vile thing to be avoided at all costs by a select few humans and the majority of cats? I find immense comfort in reading in a warm bath, with a cooled-off cup of tea to quench my thirst. Yet the ice water baths people deemed mentally ill have been subjected to in times past do not sound the least bit pleasant. It's disorienting how something as comforting as a bath can also be used as a rudimentary torture method or to try and exert control over another human being. I make up the story that the poor demon giving freezing, freezing temperatures in the bathroom was routinely treated with ice water baths in its lifetime, and has imprinted the distress and desire for justice on the place where it suffered most in life. Game mechanics-wise, the ghost is a demon because of how often it initiates hunts, trying to chase down me, the human player, and wraps its decaying hands around my neck in a death animation. But I prefer to imagine the ghost as a wronged innocent, someone whose only curse was being different, sticking around to make sure that nobody ever ends up treated at the asylum again. My character escapes, and as I leave the desolate asylum map and guess the ghost type to leave, I have hope. I hope that by learning about the atrocities of the past, we can remember the victims and work to avoid per perpetuating harmful actions in the here and now. The prolonged use of padded cells is not confined to abandoned institutions, and by recognizing where ableist practices come it came from, we can work to stop them today. By breaking the cycle of bad decisions and bigotry against the disabled, we can make the present a brighter place. Pretending that there isn't a problem won't make it go away. We can dispel the ghosts of atrocities only by acknowledging that they occurred. Whether derided as mentally ill, retarded, and crippled in hushed whispers, or if we announce ourselves loud and proud as neurodiverse, autistic, and disabled, those of us who would have once been locked in, in asylums are humans too. Regardless of what society thinks on the matter, we have souls. Thank you for listening to my short story, Confronting My Demon in the Padded Room, and I hope you have a great day. Bye!